You know, there's a certain priest who hardly ever went to wedding receptions, but when he did, he always enjoyed watching the people and how they interacted. At one such reception, he barely knew anybody who was there. He was actually just really waiting for the signal to say grace before everyone ate. But he noticed that one woman in the crowd definitely stood out. She was confidently moving from one person to the next. She was definitely, as they say, working the hall. Each and every time she encountered someone, she would speak quickly to them and let them know how delighted she was to see them and then move on. Now the priest thought at first that this was a wonderful thing. Here was this woman taking care to greet everybody there at the reception. But then this woman encountered another woman closer to the priest who appeared to be quite sad. When the woman who had been chatting to everyone approached her, she asked, well, how are you doing? The woman who looked a little bit down, she responded that she wasn't doing very well. Her husband was very sick and she was very concerned for his health. And then the priest heard the, wo the woman working the crowd say something she probably said to everybody. Oh, how wonderful. Well, thank you for coming and we can talk about this later on. The priest was completely stunned. The woman with the sick husband was looking totally bewildered. The priest never forgot that encounter. One woman carrying a heavy cross in her heart, the other making the rounds, talking to everybody, but listening to no one. The priest felt badly that this woman with a charming personality could hear the words of a worried wife without really listening to them. How often do we hear without really listening? The challenge before all of us here today do we listen to the voice of God or do we just kind of sort of kind of hear his voice? Do we let the words of God sink into our hearts and souls or are they just kind of a bunch of words that go into one ear and out the other? So in our gospel here today, our Lord Jesus, he gives to the deaf man the gift of hearing. He proclaims, be opened. And the ears of the deaf man suddenly are able to hear, but also now able to listen. Now, when we read about such miracles, we always have to ask the question about how can this example pertain to our lives? How can we benefit from it? We need to pray that our own ears might be opened, we will not only hear the voice of God, but through all the noise in our lives, we can actually listen to the people around us, especially the poor, the lonely, the scared, the brokenhearted. Now, how do we actually, though, take the grace that we receive in prayer and then put it into practice? The first thing we need to learn about listening is that listening affirms people. Indeed, it's one of the highest forms of affirmation. So when we listen, we acknowledge the other person's existence. A boss who pauses at his secretary's desk to ask her for an opinion. A mother who switches off the vacuum to listen to her child. You, at the store, asking the sales clerk, hey, how are you? How's your day going? Each of these is acknowledging someone's presence, and that can be huge. Our Lord Jesus, he did this quite often. Look, you remember Bark, back in Mark chapter 10, surrounded by that huge crowd as they were leaving the city of Jericho? Yet he heard the blind beggar cry out to him. And what does scripture tell us? Jesus stopped. He turned and called the blind Bartimaeus to himself, and he listened to him. So Jesus teaches us that we strengthen each other through good listening. The second point, though, was this. In his book, Prescriptions for a Tired Housewife, James Dobson, he observes, for some strange reason, human beings tolerate stress and pressure much more easily if at least one other person knows what they are going through. Boy, isn't that true? And so if we learn to ask good perceptive questions and wait for good answers, we can be that one other person that somebody needs to share the burdens of their life. Now, don't be getting all selfish on me, man, okay? See you guys squirming here, okay? I don't need to be sharing anybody else's burdens, man. I got burdens myself, man. My burdens are heavy, baby. Have you forgotten the point? The more you share somebody else's burdens, the less weight 
your burdens become. Don't forget that. The more we all help to carry each other's weight, the less our weight is. Don't forget about that point. Third, listening well helps the one talking to you clarify his or her own thoughts. As we give people the opportunity to speak, to talk, we can help them sort out tangled thoughts. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5, the purposes of a man's heart are in deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Be that person who, who through the gift of understanding you receive from the Holy Spirit, draws necessary things out of others. Now Jesus, he was awesome in doing these things, wonderful in drawing things out of people. Like for example, he was not in a rush at all with the dialogue with the woman at the well in John chapter four. He knew it was gonna take time for her to fully open up. Well, he spent the time with her. The fourth point is that good listening improves our responses to what other people say. See, so very, very often, we all fall into this category, we're listening in order to do what? Find a chance for us to jump in there, okay, and give our opinion, our two cents, our peace of mind, right? Okay, we're not really listening to them, we're just looking for our moment to shine, right? Proverbs 25, 11 and 12. Like apples of gold and settings of silver is a word spoken in the right circumstance. God needs you guys out there to speak in those right circumstances. It's valuable. It's treasure. Let me draw this out a little bit further. A woman by the name of Janet Dunn, she was at a retreat, and she was in some early stages of burnout at work, with her family, and so forth, and she was quietly fighting off depression. Now, her roommate at the retreat, they were, just got through breakfast, getting ready to go to the first conference, and so they were making their beds. And so Janet asked her, can I ask you a question? How do you handle depression? And she flipped the, the, the cover over the sheets there. She said, kind of chuckling, me? Oh, I just go out of one depression and right into the next. <laughs> that was all she said, though. Janet came to realize something very important. So very often, when one asks you a question, there's a statement behind that question usually the thing that really needs to be said. For Janet, she asked, how do you handle depression? What she really wanted to say was, I'm depressed, I'm afraid, I don't have a clue on how to handle this. Listening long enough will help us to hear the real statement or question or feeling behind what is said. Now, unfortunately, many of us are just way too preoccupied with ourselves when we listen. So instead of concentrating on what's being said, many of us just kind of sort of decide in our minds what our response is going to be without really fully taking the other person's point of view. So in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13, he who answers before listening, that is his folly and is his shame. How many times do we miss the opportunity to be used by God to open up the heart of another person by listening so that God himself can come and give that heart exactly what was needed. We can't miss those opportunities, man. That's how God uses us. So how do we improve our listening skills? Now, some of you right here in front of me today are experts in this. You're such a good listener. You've been blessing people for years. People sing your praises and how good a listener you are. But what about the rest of us? One of the best ways to learn to listen is to study the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read through the Gospels. Watch this masterful teacher affirm people, draw them out, accurately speak to their real needs. Jesus motivates us to become better listeners. So if we're going to imitate Jesus and his listening, we have to be able to do the following. First, Stop thinking about listening as something passive. It's not passive. Listening means actively entering to another person's situation, bringing with you, of course, the Holy Spirit and especially the gift of understanding. Now, yes, to do this, we have to fight off distractions. We also have to force ourselves to ask, okay, what's this person really saying to me? 
What does he or she really mean? But overall, you don't want to be like the fool in Proverbs 18, verse 2, who takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Don't be that person. Second, to be somebody the other person can, you, they love to talk to you, is because they learn to trust you. Be the person that others can trust. This means, just as it was with our Lord, you welcome the other person into your presence. But even though you might have all sorts of things to share, all kinds of life experience and wisdom and understanding to bring to this other person, still, learn to set yourself aside when you listen. When someone comes up to you and starts opening up their heart, put yourself aside. Because when you do that, you then are able to listen to two people the one talking to you and the Holy Spirit who's directing you to the time to speak if it is your time to speak. That's all done by the Holy Spirit. Next, put more emphasis on affirmation than on answers. Many of us, when we listen, we put ourselves in a position of having to fix things. Okay, well you got man, I'll fix it for you, okay? You know something? Most people don't want you to fix them because they have a sense to know that only God can fix them. But what they do need is for someone to understand them. Say, so, no, 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 fix me later, man. Did you just understand me? Did you just see where I'm coming from? That's what they need. And so the thing to keep in mind is, is this. Even though every now and then you've got to be the one to give an answer or some advice right there on the spot, many times God simply wants to use you as a channel of his affirming love. To do that, listening with compassion, listening with understanding. So when another person is affirmed, then God is the one who's able to work with that person. And the results, much better than anything we could have done on our own. So yes, it takes time and practice to learn to be a good listener, but it also takes a caring heart. You know, a fourth grade teacher, she once asked her class, students, who can tell me what is listening? After a few moments of silence, a little girl raised her hand, teacher, listening is wanting to hear. She's absolutely right. May all of us pray that we can become the people who want to hear and to hear with the heart of our Lord. But one final thing, guys. If you want to be a good listener, you also have to develop a good eye. As St. Mother Teresa once said, stay where you are. Find your own Calcutta. Find the sick, the suffering, the lonely right there where you are, in your homes, in your families, in your workplaces, in your schools. You can find Calcutta all over the world if you have the eyes to see. Everywhere, wherever you go, you'll find people who are unwanted, unloved, uncared for, rejected by society, completely forgotten, completely left alone. Those are the ones you need to listen to.